Good evening. Can you hear me? Hello. Good evening, teacher. Mm, I'm having some trouble evening, with my... Um, let me check. Okay. <clears throat> I'm trying again. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes, great. Teacher, I can. Great, 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 great. I, I couldn't hear you very well. That's why I was asking. Okay. Um, everybody, welcome once again. Let's begin. I'm going to share the screen with you now, and I'm going to go through the attendance list after that. So there it is. Okay. That's the first thing. Now, the second thing is attendance. Just a moment. Okay, when you hear your name, please let me know. Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. I'm here. Welcome. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Present, teacher. Good evening. Welcome. Ay, ay, ay. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good evening. Hello. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. I'm here, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present, teacher. Welcome. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Present. Welcome. Cesar Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. Present teacher. Yeah. Welcome. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martínez. Present teacher. Welcome. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Present. Welcome. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Present teacher. Welcome. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Stephanie Cortés de Martínez. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. Good evening, present. Welcome. Jose Raivina Enríquez. Here, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Luis Fernando Enríquez Herrera. Present, teacher. Welcome. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Good evening, present teacher. Welcome. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. I'm here. Okay. All right. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good evening. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Vinares. Present teacher. Hello. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Present. Welcome. Okay. We have a couple chat entries. Okay, Cecilia is online. Okay. And also Gladys. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, let's begin. 
So what do we have today? This is the Advanced English 3, and that's me, Ivan Donyang, at your service. Once again, this is session 14, and today is November the 21st. Yeah, 21st, right? Yeah, totally, 21st of 2023. So let's begin. First, we're going to have a very quick review on uh, the content we studied yesterday, mostly the one used on uh, prepositions, and uh, then future perfect versus future perfect continuous. So that's the first part. We're going to have a review and then we're going to go into the rest of the contact. Okay. Um, for today. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I guess you can. So what are we going to do here? Complete the sentences with about, in, of, on, or to. I'm sorry about the log quality. Okay. But that's the best I could get. Sometimes more than one answer is possible. Well, technically there's just one possible answer, but okay, let's take a look. So the first one goes like this. Kenji can't wait for his trip to the United States. He's looking forward to visiting California and New York. So that's it. He's looking forward to visiting California and New York. So what about number two? Um, can I have a volunteer to read the second one and tell me the right preposition? The prepositions are, remember, about, in, of, on, and to. Rosa Esmeralda, please. Before you could leave to student about... To, to, study about a, to study abroad, right? Abroad. Mm -hmm. She participated in a, a special, a special mm -hmm. training program. Yeah. Before Nicole left to study abroad, she participated in a special training program. That is correct. Thank you, Rosa. Number three. If you want to participate, please raise your hand and you'll, and, and you'll have a chance. So who wants to, who wants to try number three? Gabriela Sequeira. Hello. So number three. If you have the opportunity to study abroad, don't be scared of taking it. Don't be scared of taking it. That is correct. Thank you, Gabriela. Very good. If you have the opportunity to study abroad, don't be scared of taking it. Good. Thank you. Uh, what about number four? Volunteer, please raise your hand. Thanks for your participation, Gabriela and Rosa. Who will help me with number four? Debbie Segura. Okay. Michelle made friends easily after she adjusted to the new culture. Yes. Michelle made friends easily after she adjusted to the new culture. That is correct. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, Byron, number five, please. Okay. Jack, <clears throat> Jack couldn't stop smiling. He was excited about meeting the other students from his school who were chosen to study abroad in China. That is correct. Jack couldn't stop smiling. He was excited about meeting the other students from his school who were chosen to study abroad in China. Good. That is correct. Thank you, Byron. And number six, the last one. Okay, I need a person who hasn't participated. Who wants to try? Number six. Please. This is a review and extra practice on the use of the prepositions, preposition collocations. Maritza Isabel, thank you. If you want to take advantage uh, to advantage to your school study abroad programs, you should talk to your advisor. Well, take advantage to, it's a different preposition actually, but you get a second oh. opportunity. Okay, it's um, advantage of, oh, oh, sorry, I, <laughs> I confused. No to say advantage of your school study abroad programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to take advantage of your school study abroad programs, you should talk to your advisor. That is correct. Thank you, Maritza. Very good. Okay, so those are the prepositions right there. You look forward to something or to doing something. By the way, one thing that I want you to notice is the form of the verb that follows a preposition. 
you know that the form of the verb after a preposition, normally you have preposition, then you have to use the gerund form of the verb. In other words, the nominal form of a verb that ends in ing. That's how it works. It's preposition plus ing. So when you have something like this, imagine, you can be, for example, the first one, right? Be or, or just look forward to. To is a preposition, okay? So you can look forward to something or you can look forward to doing something, okay? If you have a noun, okay? Well, you don't have to change anything, right? But if you have a verb, you have to use the ing form. For example, you can say, I'm looking forward to, and then something, to my graduation, okay? Or you can use a verb. You can say, I'm looking forward to celebrating ing, okay, my graduation. So the idea is, remember, after a preposition, if you need to, well, after a preposition comes a noun or the nominal form of a verb, which is a gerund. And the gerund is the verb in ing, basically. So Again, you can look forward to something like this. I'm looking forward to my graduation, or you can look forward to doing something. I'm looking forward to celebrating my graduation, okay? I'm looking forward to traveling to France, for example. I'm looking forward to visiting my family uh, in December, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the idea. Now, if you notice, uh, the same pattern is here. Um, number three, for example, if you have the opportunity to study abroad, don't be scared of. Of is a preposition. Therefore, after that, you have to use the ing form. Don't be scared of taking it. Okay? You can see it here. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, Michelle, oh, sorry, sorry. Ah, number five, Jack couldn't stop smiling. He was excited about, and after that, there's a verb. You have to use the ing form. He was excited about meeting the other students from his school. Okay, and so on. So the idea is, after a preposition, if you need to use a verb, you have to use the ing form of the verb. Okay, so general rule. All right, uh, good. That's a good review on uh, the use of prepositions. Now we have to review the grammar topic from last time. Now, future perfect and future perfect continuous. So we use the future perfect to emphasize that something will be completed or achieved by a particular point in the future. So you say this time next year, your self-confidence will have increased. So when you say, by this time next year, that's a specific moment in the future. And if the action happens before this moment in the future, then you use future perfect. So by this time next year, not right now, in a year specifically, on, on November the 21st, 2024, okay, your self-confidence will have increased. Why? Because this increase will happen before that moment in the future. So uh, future perfect basically uses this. You use will. You can also use be going to. You can say is going to have increased. It is possible, but not as common, okay? Normally you will use will. So you use will. After that, you use have, always have, never has. Because will is a modal auxiliary verb. And after a modal auxiliary verb, you can only use the base form of another verb. So be very careful right there. You say will have and never will has. Okay, I've seen this mistake done when, when the subject is he, she, or it, people may get confused, but no, it's always will have. And after that, you have to use the main verb in past participle. That's the idea. Second one is you use the future perfect continuous to emphasize the duration of an activity in progress at a specific point in the future, All right? So this is a similar concept, but the activity hasn't finished. The activity is still happening. The activity is still in process or in progress in that specific moment in the future, okay? So when you say by the end of next year, that will be December, 2024, 
okay? You will have been studying your chosen language for 12 months, okay? Does this mean that the person will have graduated by then? No. This person will continue to study, okay? Probably a few more months or maybe another year, okay, is still necessary for this person to graduate. So this person will have been studying uh, his or her chosen language for 12 months. In other words, the action is not finished. The action is not complete. It will be in progress in that moment in the future, but it will not be complete nonetheless. So what is the structure of the future perfect continuous? It's will have been, always will have been, and after that, a verb in ing, okay? will have been and the verb in ing. Remember, future perfect will have and verb in past participle. Future perfect continuous will have been and the verb in ing. That's the idea, all right? So uh, nothing new right here. This is the same thing we studied yesterday. So um, we completed a couple exercises, which we're not going to repeat today. Instead, we have this new exercise. So complete the sentences with the future perfect or the future perfect continuous form of the verb in parentheses. So I'm going to give you the first one. So by the end of the class, okay, so by the end of the class, that is like by 9 p.m., okay, you have the verb learn. So uh, you can use, I will have learned about the future perfect tense. I will have learned. Meaning, you will understand, or the process of learning will be complete, okay, um, before 9 p.m., before the class finishes, okay? So that's the idea. Now, I'm going to give you, let's see, four minutes. I'm going to give you four minutes for you to complete the other eight statements. Uh, remember that you can use future perfect or future perfect continuous. That's the idea. All right, so four minutes for you to complete this exercise at home. And after those four minutes, we're going to check answers together. All right, I need your participation. Okay, four minutes starting right now. Let's begin.
All right, time is up. What about number two? Um, number two, who wants to read this? Rufino and then Rosa. I got to try uh, by 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 the year 2020 <laughs> or 2020 uh, 2020 I I will have been working in my career for several years I will have been working on my career for several years that is correct thank you Rufino very good Rosa do you want to try number three Or someone else? If you have an answer, please raise your hand. Number three, please. Let's give it a try. Come on. Show me you've been working on this exercise in the past four minutes. Biden, thank you. Before she started, Suze will have made her first million dollars. Before she study, Sue will have made her first million dollars. That is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Byron. Number four. If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Maritza, thank you. I try to trail. At the end of his trip, said we have been visiting for different countries. Well, but we're talking about the end of this trip. So it's a specific moment in the future and it also marks the end of something. So maybe the uh, action we, will not be in, in progress. We have, we have visited will have visited. That's more like it. Yeah, at the end of his trip, Seth will have visited four different countries. That's right. Thank you, Maritza. Okay. Number five. Volunteer, please raise your hand. <laughs> Number five. It's a question, by the way. So this one is it's a little bit different. Just the word order changes a little bit. So who, who wants to try? <clears throat> okay, Rufino, thank you very much. I'm going to try it. It's... Sure. Uh, by 11, how, how long will, will, will Dan have been watching TV? That is correct. Okay, by 11, how long will Dan have been watching TV? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Thank you. That is correct. Uh, number six. Come on, people. Participate. Show me you're there. <laughs> Only the same five or six people participate all the time. And some people who used to participate are not participating anymore these days. Jose Raibin. Uh, when I finish college, I will have been in school for 16 years. Yeah, when I finish college, I will have been in school for 16 years. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. What about number seven? Thank you, Jose. We're late, but the time we get there, they will have finished uh, dinner. Sorry, that's number eight. Ah, about... Sorry, sorry. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Pretty soon, I will have, I will have been waiting for her for a for an hour. I'm getting annoyed. 
Yeah, pretty soon I will have been waiting for her for an hour. I'm getting annoyed. Okay, she's late. Good. Thank you, Jose. Number eight. Who wants to try number eight? Byron, thank you. Okay. We're late. By the time we get there, they will have finished dinner. By the time we get there, they will have finished dinner. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. And number nine, Rosa. Um, on Friday, on this weekend, of this Cara week. will this week, Cara will travel with have traveling for two months. Cara will have traveled for two months. Um, it sounds to me like an action that's still in progress. So, what's the correct form? Rosa, you there? Um, or maybe Boris can help us. He's he's raising his hand. Okay, teacher. Uh, on Friday, on this week, Cara will have been traveling for two months. Cara will have been traveling for two months. That is correct. Okay, so she will continue traveling. Okay, so by Friday, on Friday of this week, Cara will have been traveling for two months. Okay, she has a lot of money to travel. So um, yeah, good, good. One more exercise based on this, okay? Because I'm, I really want to know that this is clear. I'm sorry about the poor quality of this. Okay, this is the best I have, unless maybe I can do something else. Um, color, maybe, no, let's see, a bit darker. Can't find an option. I think it looks worse now. Okay. Well, what do we have here? There's an email from Kim uh, to Julie. Okay, it's a lady in Paris right now. So uh, you have this. It's just pretty much the same idea. You just have to choose whether it is present, sorry, future continuous or future perfect continuous. So I, Julie, by this time tomorrow, she says, and the verb arrive is in parentheses, I will have arrived in France. I can't believe I get to study here, or get to study there, sorry. I'm nervous, but who wants to try number two? Now, we're not, I'm not going to give you like four minutes to do this because that will take up too much time. Instead, I would like to have, you know, some spontaneous um, volunteering right now. Jose. Uh, but uh I'm nervous, but I hope by next week I will have learned my way around. I will have learned my way around. In other words, this person will know where to go if 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 this person wants to go to a specific place. I will have learned my way around. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. What about the next one? What about the next one? Jose. I'm sure I will have gotten lost several times by then too. Yeah, I'm sure I will have gotten lost several times by then too. Okay, that is correct. Okay, thank you, Jose, for your continuous participation. Okay, what about number four? Come on, I, ha I have more students, okay? Not just the same people. I have more students. I want to hear you. So... Who wants to try number four? Boris. Okay. Um, I will have meeting my roommate by this time next week too. That's not grammatically correct. I mean, the 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 structure is not grammatically correct. Okay. So uh, I will have? I will have met. I will have met is more like it. Okay. okay. I will have met my roommate by this time next week too. Thank you, Boris. Okay. Good. Uh, I hope she's nice. I'm nervous about meeting my new classmates. They're all from different parts of the world. So what about the next sentence? I hope in six months time, blah, 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 have many opportunities to learn from them 
as well as my professors. Byron. I hope in six months time, I will have had many opportunities to learn from them as well as my professor. That is correct. Thank you. Yeah, I hope in six months time, I will have had many opportunities to learn from them as well as my professors. Good. Very good. Uh, the next one, I can't wait for you to visit. Maybe you can come in December. That should give you some time to save your money since ya que, right? Since means ya que, o puesto que, right? Um, what about number six? Who wants to give it a try? Jose, I am not surprised. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. That should give you, that should give you some time to save your money since you have been working. You will have been, uh -huh. you will have worked for a few months by then is um but what okay uh um, you you will mm -hmm. have worked for a few months by then okay let's see i can wait for you to visit maybe you can come in december that should give you some time to save your money since you okay um but it sounds to me like she will still be working. Probably she won't have to quit her job to, to go there. So it's more like a continuous action. So you will have been working you will have for been a few working. months by then. Uh -huh, for a few months by then. Okay. And she will continue working. Okay. Thank you, Jose. And number seven. Okay. So, and also by then, I am sure... And then in parentheses, you have fine. Come on, let's do this. Debbie. Um, for some, sorry, for a few months by then, and also by then, I'm sure I will have found mm -hmm. Some great restaurants to eat. Yeah. Some great and, restaurants. <laughs> okay. I, I thought you were not going to continue, but okay. So, but yeah, that's correct. And also by then, I'm sure I will have found some great restaurants to eat at. I know how much you love French food. I already miss you. So write to me as soon as you can, Kim. All right. Good. All right. So that, that was our, our review and uh, say grammar extra on, 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 you know, topic from yesterday. Janita, you want me to share the screen, right? It, yes, teacher, but yeah. um, I have a question. Ah, uh, yes, what's your question? Um, teacher, I don't know why, like in this case, to eat at, I don't know uh, why left why they, why they alone. Use the position at? At, yes. Okay. Wait, because... what case uh, uh, left at the end of the sentence, the preposition? Okay, so normally when you have, say, uh, a question or when you have a relative clause or a relative uh, say a noun clause like this one okay you can use prepositions at the end for example you eat i'm going to move this let's imagine let me adjust this okay so um i am sure uh I'll find some new some great restaurants to eat at okay so We will find, now let's see, imagine that you have lunch every day at a specific restaurant. So or we have lunch every day at a specific restaurant. So we have lunch at, because that's a preposition, at Tony's, for example, every day. It's the name of the restaurant, okay? So when you're using a noun phrase, like the one that we studied a few weeks ago, I believe it was in this level. If it was not in this level, it was the previous one, but it, I'm pretty sure we have covered this before. We have this. 
me show you. Okay, so uh, the sentence in this case is also by then, I'm sure I, sorry, <laughs> I was not looking. Okay, also by then, I'm sure I will have found some great restaurants uh, to eat at. Why do we use the preposition at? If we don't use the preposition at, it will sound confusing. So by then I'm sure I will have found some great restaurants to eat. But if you just say to eat, sounds like, well, are you going to eat the restaurant? Or are you going to eat at the restaurant? That's the thing. So if you don't include the preposition, it may sound confusing. It's not the same to say, here is a sandwich for you to eat, okay? That's okay. We said for you to eat, you understand that you're going to eat the sandwich, okay? But if you say, uh, I'm sure I will have found some great restaurants to eat, sounds like you're going to eat the restaurant, and that is impossible. So therefore, you use the preposition to indicate that this is a place. I will have found some great restaurants to eat at, okay? Often, sentences end in prepositions uh, in the English language. Some people say that this is informal English, but uh, in my experience, this is pretty much the way to speak. Okay, the same thing happens, okay, when you're asking a question. For example, imagine in Spanish you say, de, right, because that will be the preposition, de donde eres. In English, you ask the question, where are you? And then you have to add the preposition from. Where are you from? Whereas in Spanish, you use the preposition at the beginning of the question. In English, you will use the preposition at the end. If you don't use the preposition, then you will have a totally different question. Where are you? That's a different question. So where are you? Oh, I'm in my house. I'm at work. Okay. I'm at university. I'm at my parents, et cetera, et cetera. But then you add the preposition from to specify, okay, um, the question or whatever it is you're talking about, and then people will get a completely different idea. Where are you from? Ah, you say, I am from La Paz, for example, or I am from uh, Chalatenango, I am from Morazan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or if you're from a different country, you say, I'm from Honduras, I'm from Nicaragua, I'm from Costa Rica, I'm from Mexico, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So mm -hmm. that's how you use the preposition at the end, pretty much gives you specific information on what you're trying to communicate. If you omit it, uh the idea will be different okay mm -hmm. thanks a lot teacher you're welcome so um what's next okay uh we're going to do this listening exercise which is 4.3 when in rome okay are you familiar with this expression by the way when you say when in rome i'm going to put it here when in rome Yes, Boris. Boris? Boris raising his hand, but I can hear you. Boris? Hello? No? Okay. All right, so when in Rome, uh, do as the Romans. So what is the meaning of that expression? Have you heard it before? Sorry, teacher. Uh, I lost my my menu. Oh, okay, no problem. Okay, so uh, did you want to say anything? No. Okay. So. Yeah, completely the same that you said. Ah, okay. Do you know the meaning? Uh, of course. Uh, uh, when you are in a uh, in a stranger the country, mm -hmm. you had to. Uh, Try to get the, the custom of that uh, or the people, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much the same. It's it's an it's a uh, a proverb, okay. That means that when you are in foreign lands, or where you are in a different town or a different city, okay, you have to adjust to that place by imitating the locals. So when in Rome, do as the Romans. Romans, yeah. 
So um, if you don't know, for example, you go to Japan, all right? Imagine you go to Japan, and if you go to Japan, you will probably see that the Japanese don't don't uh, greet each other by giving each other a kiss or hugging or anything like that. No, okay, they bow, okay? They bow to each other. And then you take a look at that and you say like, oh, okay, so here it is not appropriate to shake hands. Probably it's not appropriate to kiss ladies on the cheek, et cetera, et cetera. So people try to avoid physical contact. So what do they do? They bow. Okay, so you see that and you say, okay, I'm going to do that, you know, in order not to make a cultural mistake. So you go there, you bow, you try to imitate the locals. That's the idea, trying to avoid a cultural mistake or, you know, embarrassing yourself in public. Jose. Teacher, in Spanish, we we know the, this expression as dichos, but in English, which name do they use? Mm, okay, you can say saying, or you can say uh, proverb, because a saying is un dicho, a proverb is like un refrán. Okay, thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, when in Rome, do as the Romans. Okay, um, so what do we have here? Listening part. Listen to Andrew, Rachel, and Layla talking about their experiences abroad. Answer the questions. Because of the time, because we don't have much time, we're going to omit part A and we're going to focus directly on part B. Listen again. Did Andrew, Rachel, or Layla do these things? Write the correct letter. Number one is feel homesick. When you feel homesick, you really, really miss your home, or you really, really miss your hometown or your country, okay? That's the meaning of feeling homesick. Sometimes you go to a different country, and this happens to a lot of people, right? Especially when they move into a different country, they think that things are going to be like super exciting and super nice and everything, and maybe they are, but they will also be, uh, they will also fall into cultural shock, and they will see that many things are very different from the way they are done in their or, uh, original countries or their origin countries. And therefore they, they, they don't feel completely at home and, and they miss their country. They miss their house, they miss their hometown. And that's when you feel homesick. You feel like you don't belong to the new place, but everything is like uh, a process of, you know, adaptation in the end. Number two, uh, who went out for afternoon tea? Okay, self-explanatory. Who made friends at tapas restaurants? Who started feeling confident about her English? Number five, who ate dinner late at night? Who thought people talked about uh, themselves too much? Okay, who enjoyed the old building? Who watched comedy TV shows? And who tried to talk about herself? Okay, so I'm going to uh, play the track uh, once and I want you to identify the people, right? If it is Andrew, it's letter A. If it is Rachel, letter R. If it is Layla, letter L. Let's listen to it. Did Andrew, A, Rachel, R. Can you hear that, by the way? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much or Layla, L, do these things. Write the correct letter. 1. Andrew When I was in college, I spent a semester studying in London. And even though we speak the same language, English people and people from the U.S. are very different. I guess I felt that people from the U.S. have a, a bad reputation. Some people think we're loud and that we speak our minds too much. So I tried to listen a bit more and not be so assertive, if that makes sense. I wanted to make a good impression. I suppose I shouldn't have worried about it, but I did. I couldn't help it. I loved the lifestyle there. Going out for afternoon tea was fun, and I really loved the old buildings. I mean, they're really old. We don't have anything that old in the U.S., so that part was pretty amazing. Another thing was the TV. The British have a different sense of humor, very dry. I really like it. Their comedy shows on TV are really funny. I'd have to say my experience was a positive one overall, except for the rainy weather, of course. I had trouble getting used to that. 2. Rachel I lived in Madrid for a whole year, and I have to be honest and say that at first, well... 
I wasn't very happy. You see, I was homesick. I missed my family, and I just wanted to go home. Part of the problem was my Spanish. I couldn't communicate very well. But I love to eat, and that's what really saved me. You see, once I discovered tapas, oh, <laughs> let me explain, these delicious appetizers you eat. So I made some Spanish friends, and we'd go out for tapas all the time. I got to eat a lot of delicious food, and of course, my Spanish improved dramatically as well. But there was one thing that was difficult to adjust to, and that was that dinner was always served at a late hour. I wasn't used to eating at 11 o'clock at night. 3. Layla I came over to the U.S. from the Middle East. My family opened up a restaurant here. At first, I found it difficult. Everything seemed so different. Just using a payphone, for example, or going to a doctor was so different. I was pretty overwhelmed. And I guess because I wasn't feeling comfortable, I tended to make friends only with people from my country. I felt like I was living in a bubble, separated from the rest of the people all around me. But once I started feeling more confident about my English, I started meeting local people. I found them very friendly and open, and it turned out to be very easy to make friends. But there was one thing about people from the U.S. that bothered me at first. I found it hard to get used to the way they talked so much about themselves. It took me a long time to understand that you were supposed to talk about yourself, too, because that is how people get to know one another. It's still hard for me to talk a lot about myself, but I'm getting better at it. All right. <clears throat> so, number one, who felt so sorry, who felt homesick? That was the answer. Please raise your hand. Uh, Jenny, and then Boris, and then Noemi. Okay, and then Rufino. Please keep your hands up so I won't forget. So, Jenny, who felt homesick? Hey, Rachel. It was Rachel. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, who will be next? Ah, Noemi. Noemi, who went out for afternoon tea? Noemi, Alicia? Pardon. Andrew. It was there... Andrew. Yes. Okay, letter A. That's right. It was Andrew. Very good. Um, Rufino, number three. Who made friends at Tapas restaurants? Free, um, Layla, I think. <laughs> I, I maybe Layla, are you I sure? I, I, I'm uh, not sure, I'm a little bit sure. <laughs> okay, well, it's, it's not Layla, it's not Layla. Sorry, let's see if Rosa can tell us. Okay, <laughs> uh, Rosa, what about number three? Who made friends at Tapas restaurants? Um. <laughs> Rachel? It was Rachel. <laughs> that is correct. Okay, very good. It was Rachel. Okay, thank you. What about number four? Who started feeling confident about her English? Byron. Layla. It was Layla. Very good. Okay, who ate dinner late at night? Raise your hand if you know the answer, please. Oh, Boris. Rachel? It was Rachel. That is correct. Very good. Uh, what about number six? Who thought people talked about themselves too much? Maritza, and then Jenny, and then Boris. Um, number six? Yes. Um, Layla? It was Layla. Yeah, that's right. Good. Jenny, number seven, who enjoyed the old buildings? Andrew. It was Andrew. Ve yeah, very good. It was Andrew. Yes. Uh, number eight, Boris, I believe, wanted to participate. Boris, number eight, who watched comedy TV shows? Andrew. It was Andrew, too. Okay. It's the British comedy shows. 
Good. And the last one. Thank you. The last one. Who tried to talk about herself? Noemi. Oh, sorry, Noemi. Uh, can you activate your microphone? Okay. Layla. It was Layla. Okay. Yeah, that is correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Always remember, if you're not participating, deactivate your microphones, okay? Otherwise, you know, there's like background sound coming into the meeting. So, um, thank you. All right, uh, Jose Raibin, I don't know if you want to say something or if your hand just is up. No, sorry, teacher. It's up, okay. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so... Um, Let's go over this part. Just give me a moment. Just a second. All right, we have it there. Okay, so um, that will conclude the first part of the section. We're going to start only because this is only the beginning of the second part of section number four. You have travel tips. This is the starting point. Read these people's experiences and the experts' advice. Can you think of any other advice? So what do we have? You have Terry's travel trips. Travel tips, I'm sorry. Our travel expert, Terry Tripper, responds to some troubled travelers. It sounds like a tongue twister. Responds to some troubled travelers, troubled travelers. So um, let's take a look at the first one, okay? A woman fell down in front of us during our sightseeing tour. While we were helping her, someone stole our money. If we hadn't been so nice, we would still have our cash. That was Margaret from Boston. Um, I need a volunteer to read Terry's advice. What does Terry say? Just volunteer. Let's check our pronunciation. Debbie. Okay, Terry says, I'm not nearly as nice as you if there is a commotion. I hold on to my wallet. Mm -hmm. If you are worried about, uh, can you move it? Okay. So that, that's it, right? So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, I'm not nearly as nice as you if there is a commotion, I hold on to my wallet. This actually, something like this actually happened to me once in the bus. Somebody created a distraction in the moment I didn't understand, but later on I understood what was ha what had happened. Somebody created a distraction on the bus. That was many years ago. And, uh, and they used the opportunity to steal my cell phone. A very small cell phone that I had oof, many years ago, like 15 years ago, probably. And... Uh, it was until after I realized that my cell phone was gone that I realized that everything was an act. I was like, oh, okay, they deceived me. They distracted me, okay? And then they used the opportunity, they used the confusion, okay, to steal my phone. So I guess that's exactly what happened right here. So Terry says, I'm not nearly as nice as, as you. If there is a commotion, I hold on to my wallet, okay? Just to make sure nobody steals it. Rufino, okay? And remember, ah, oh, sorry, Debbie, you were reading here. Okay, uh, Debbie, can you help me read this part? I'm sorry, I, I, I misunderstood okay. what you were doing. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, and, and remember, sometimes the person creating the commotion is working together with the thief. Yeah, exactly what happened to me. So, and remember, sometimes the person created the commotion is working together with the thief. Okay, exactly what happened to me that time on the bus. So, um, Rufino, can you help me read the next one? You have Sergio from Rio de Janeiro. What does he say? Uh, okay. Uh, I want to share, share a tip my friend gave me. If you're worried, worried about losing, losing your passport, losing your passport, don't carry in around the passport. Thank mm -hmm. you. Don't carry carry in around with you. Just yeah, just keep it in your hotel room. Yes. 
Sergio from Rio de Janeiro says, I want to share a tip my friend gave me. If you're worried about losing your passport, don't carry it around with you. Just keep it in your hotel room. Okay. He says that. But is this the best course of action? I don't know. Terry says, um, uh, Rufino, can you help me read what Terry said? Okay. Sorry. Your friend was wrong. Keep your passport. Your passport. With you at passport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> passport with you at all times. If someone had broken into your room, you would you would probably still be trying to get home. Yeah, thank you. Terry says sorry. Your friend was wrong. That's terrible advice, according to, to Terry. Keep your passport with you at all times. If someone had broken into your room, you will probably still be trying to get home. So, um, Janita, okay, uh, do you have a question or do you want to read? I want to read. Okay, great. Can you help me read the last ones, please? Okay. Help. Can I read anything in advance? And now in London, in high season, in the only hotel rooms we can find are way too expensive. Yeah, he says, help, I didn't arrange anything in advance, and now I'm in London in high season, and the only hotel rooms we can find are way too expensive. That's Kim from Vancouver. So what's Terry's advice, uh, Janita? Um, continue, teacher. Yes, yes, what Terry says. Try a travel website. And in the future, plan before you go, if you have done some research at home, you wouldn't be having such a bad vacation now. Yeah, thank you. Terry says, try a travel website. And in the future, plan before you go. If you had done some research at home, you wouldn't be having such a bad vacation now, okay? Now, what is this? What we have been reading uh, contains a lot of examples of the next grammar topic, which is mixed conditionals, okay? But that's not for today. Basically, this is the end of the class. I'm just going to go through the attendance list one more time, and then we will finish. Just, let's see. Abdi Aviso Peña Lopez is here. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla is also here. Ana Filomena Mendoza is here. Ana Yanira Mendoza is here. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva is here. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino is here. Boris Martin Salinas Quintanilla is here. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez is here. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez is also here. Uh, Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez is here. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos is here. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia is here. Gabriela Lores Sequeira Bernal is here. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez is also here. Gladys Imelda Sanchez is here. Jenny Elizabeth Santiana Cortez is here. Jose Rabin Enriquez is also here. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansori is here. Um, Luis Fernando Enriquez Herrera is here. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz is not. Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre is here. Melanie Andrea. Trinidad Villanueva is not online right now. Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle is here. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura is also here. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores is here. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares is also here. And Sandra Cecilia Munguía is online too. Okay, everybody, thank you very much. Okay, keep working on the platform if you haven't finished it. Tomorrow we're going to continue working on uh, section number four, the second part of section number four of this level. And uh, that's it for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, teacher. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Bye bye. Good night, teacher. Good night.